Hello, hello! So today we're going to take a look at this, the Bombardier CRJ-700. So this aircraft is a twin-engine regional airliner which is designed to connect large major airports and hubs with smaller, more local airports. The CRJ typically seats anywhere between 66 and 78 passengers and is used over shorter distances. The 700 is one of five CRJ variants offered by Bombardier and if I've done my research correctly, the biggest operator of the CRJ aircraft is currently Skywest Airlines from America. So let's jump in and take a look at this aircraft. Okay, and here we are in the plane. So um, I'm actually going to record this slightly differently. Um, rather than highlight each section individually, I'm actually going to record the whole sort of guide live. Um, because there's only a few panels in this plane, but the panels which are there have multiple functions on them. So rather than, as I said, rather than highlight each section individually, it's better for me to just talk through each one and demonstrate each one as I go go through them. So the first um, panel here is obviously the main cockpit, um, and I'll talk about the three um, electronics displays first of all. So first of all, on the left here, you have your primary flight display. Now, interestingly enough, you can actually click on it and sort of pop out the display and get a, a better or a bigger and a clearer view of it. And you can do that with all of these. Um, so the primary flight display has all of your um, flight information and also um, a horizontal situation indicator and a vertical speed indicator there as well. The next display is your is a multifunction display which is mainly tied into sort of maps and navigation. So you can see here that you've got a VOR indicator going through the middle um, and you can actually change this display by using some of the buttons over here. So if you hit the, um, the format and range you can see that it changes what kind of horizontal situation indicator you have there. And then if you hit it a couple more times you can see that if I clear it you actually have part, like it's kind of like a a GPS style map there and then if you turn the smaller knob there you can see that it'll zoom out so we have the Inverness VOR and then further down the coast you've got the Kinloss VOR there. It's not the clearest thing, it's not something I personally would use but um, that's an option there for you if you're um, if you're interested in that. Um, you can also change between a VOR indicator or if you hit the BRG button here you'll have an ADF there which is a, a pink um, sort of arrow or you can get rid of them completely and then you, if you hit the button underneath I believe that gives you a secondary um, I think it's an ADF indicator there so some of the um, the other buttons on this little panel here you've got your nav GPS there switching between the two now you've got DH there which changes this value up here. I believe this is your decision height. Um, so if you're making an ILS landing you have to decide by a certain altitude if you whether if you want to continue with the landing or not. Um, I haven't found by changing this height you know you don't get any sort of call outs in the cockpit to say you've reached it or anything so um, I don't see the, the sort of the use for that there. And then the last couple of buttons you can use here are your sort of barometric pressure settings. So the little square button allows you to change between inches and um, I think it's hectopaxel or hectopascals, I think it is, uh, or millibars essentially. So um, you can change that there um, as you need to. <coughs> Pardon me. Now the last display here on your right is another multifunction display. I think these displays might also be called an ECAST display. Basically it gives you information about the engines and the various systems on the plane. So you can see here we've got engine displays there. We've also got a landing gear indicator and here we've also got a flaps indicator and just underneath that you've got fuel information. So if I extend the flaps just now you should see that the graphic will change there. So you've got slats and flaps. So slats are the sort of the leading edge of the wing. Um, those it can extend and then your flaps obviously are at the the back on the back side of the wing. Now there are several pages that you can access on this display here by using the up and down buttons. So if we click down 
you can see here that we've got um, ECS. I don't know what that stands for, but you can see that um, it looks like it's related to engine and pressure. So I think it's uh, the air pressure which um, either each engine is generating and the APU. And I believe that pack or packs are the is the air conditioning system within the cabin of the plane. Um, and you can see sea altitude there, so I guess that would be cabin altitude. So as you fly, that will change depending on what altitude the plane is flying at. And then the rate, I believe, is the rate at which the um, cabin altitude changes. If we hit down again, you can see we've got a page regarding the hydraulics, um, or the hydraulic fuel within the, um, the plane there. So you can see we've got one for the left engine, uh, with a PSI reading. We've got a reservoir for the... Um, the main body of the plane at 3000 psi and then another reservoir for the right engine. Moving on to flight controls, so this gives you sort of information about uh, each control surface on the plane. Now if I, if you have a look at the green uh, sort of boxes here, these are all of the um, control surfaces on the wing of the plane. So you can see now that we've got uh, 20 degrees on the fronts of the wings, so those would be the slats. You've got a few boxes here which would be the speed brakes and then the backs of the wings which are at 8 degrees. So what I'll do is extend the uh, flaps again so you can see what happens there. So you can see the flaps are now at 20 degrees, the slats have extended to 25. So you can see the sort of the status of each of the uh, controls there. And also if you want to check the speed brakes, I'm just going to hit the speed brake button there. And you'll see that all of those boxes now have an arrow with an up arrow to say that all of the, um, the speed brakes or the spoilers have been extended. And now they're brought back in. You can also see what your um, various actual control surfaces are doing. So if I pull back on the controls, you can see the elevators move. If I push forward, they go forward. we have got your ailerons and then you've got your rudder there. So if you want to check if your flight controls are doing what they should be you would flick on this page and then you move through the controls and you can make sure that everything's doing as it should be. And then just underneath that you've got a few controls or a few settings to um, to check where your uh, your various trim tabs are. So you've got your Alien uh, uh, elevator sorry, and the rudder there. And then the next page is your sort of fuel page. So this looks quite complicated just now, but um, a lot of these kind of circular icons will represent valves, so you can control sort of the cross feed or where the fuel is flowing through the plane. If you need to take it from the left wing and flow it through to the right wing, and so on and so forth, um, it's not a system I understand fully, so I'm not going to talk about it in detail. But you can sort of check the um, the fuel here and, and check how it's flowing and where it's all being stored and, and whatnot from there. And then I think this is the last page. You've got another sort of trim page here, I'm not sure why. Um, and then you've got a few more bits about air pressure and uh, cabin altitude and cabin temperature there. And then back to your engine displays. Now there's one last button here on this display that works and that's just uh, PRI which just takes you back to the primary view which is simply the engine display. So that's everything for the, uh, the sort of the bottom section of this panel. On the top here you've got a few uh, sort of annunciator lights here. Uh, you've got a master warning and a master caution. Uh, you can click on these lights but it doesn't bring up an annunciator panel at all. Um, Sorry, on that subject actually, the announcer or any alerts will be brought up in this little section here. Uh, just so you know. Um, actually, I'll, I'll display that in a moment. Um, but yeah, you'll get lights coming up here, but you can't actually, you can click on them to remove the lights, but it doesn't bring up like a, a different panel at all. And then, as you probably guessed, up here you've got your um, your autopilot panel here, and similar to the um, to the Learjet. If you want to see what your values are set to, uh, if I roll the speed up here, you can see that all of the, your autopilot values are represented with pink numbers on the primary flight display there. And then obviously your course 
will change on your horizontal situation indicators there. Okay, so that's the uh, the main panel there. Let's have a look at the uh, the throttle quadrant next. <coughs> so you can see that we've got a few different um, controls here, all within the throttle quadrant. So first, you've got the uh, landing gear and an auto brake system. It's down here. You've got a parking brake. You've got your spoiler lever there. You've got your two throttle levers for both engines. You've got a manual landing gear release. Uh, hopefully you should never have to use that, but it's there just in case. You've got your trim controls up here and then your flap controls there. You, now you'll notice that there's no option for slats. The slats will extend automatically depending on what your flap settings are. And that's pretty much the uh, throttle quadrant there. And then the final kind of main panel to look at is the overhead panel. And you can see that we've got, again, a lot of um, sort of functions all in the same panel. However, each sort of function has its own little section, and you'll see that as I talk through them all. So this first kind of mini panel here is all of your electrical systems. So you've got your battery master switch, you've got your generator switches, all there. So that's all contained within this kind of one little section. Moving down, you've got your hydraulics systems, all there. You've got your fuel pumps and crossfeed pumps on that little panel there. You've got your engine starter and ignition there. You've got your APU and some bleed valves. I think that's uh, controlling the airflow through the plane. And then your last little panel there is your anti-ice. And then everything below that is related to the various lights on the plane. And that's about it for this plane. Um, there is one last panel that you can look at here which is just simply a backup um, electronic flight display so if your primary flight display fails for any reason you've got your sort of standby one here. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the virtual cockpit. And you can see that the layout is pretty much the same um, regarding the kind of different flight displays here. You do have a flight computer which you cannot use uh, you've got a few controls in the middle here, a lot of them you can't use, the only one mainly here, oh, sorry, the only control that you can mainly use is the uh, landing gear in the middle. Um, you've got your radios down here, and actually the radio panel, um, sorry I forgot to mention, you do have a radio panel in the 2D version, which looks very, uh, very similar to that. Actually I'll do a quick demonstration of that while I remember. So, as you've seen before, it's COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2. Um, now, if you want to switch... Uh, th sorry, the numbers in white are going to be your active frequencies. The numbers in blue are your standby frequencies. And if you want to switch, you just hit the top button on each side. Now, if you want to go over here and... Ah, okay. Okay, so you can click directly on the numbers to change them. Or if you want to use the the knob to change them, if you want to, the knob will only change the number which has the box around it. But if you want to move that box and select a different frequency to change, you just hit the, um, the sort of the second button on that side. The box moves across, and you see you can change numbers like that. And then if you want to, um, if you want to listen to the um, Morse code identifier for any radio setting, you simply look at which uh, radio it is that you want and then just s turn the arrow so it's pointing sideways. I'm not sure why it's not just an on-off button, but um, if you flick the arrow so it's pointing diagonally, then um, that's effectively turning on the identifier. Give it a few seconds and then you'll hear the, uh, the Morse code coming through your headset there. Um, and that's about it. So you can see that the cockpit is um, is sort of mirrored on each side, so a pilot or a co-pilot could fly it equally as well. And then you've got your overhead panel there with all your various light switches and all of your smaller um, kind of panels all kind of built into one there as well. So there you have it. That's the CRJ700. Um, hope you enjoyed it. For the next video, um, I cannot remember. I think it's going to be the Boeing 737 that I'm going to have a look at next. So um, I hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.